The next version of Logos is coming soon, promising all new AI features. And like it or not, the artificial intelligence revolution is here. Every day, there seems to be another new AI tool just promising to improve our lives in radical ways. And it's thrilling and terrifying all at once. So when I was given early access to the new Sermon Assistant AI tool in Logos, in their Sermon Builder, I was intrigued to try it out. I'm a pastor who's used Logos for years to aid my Bible study and sermon preparation. So I decided to test these new AI features while writing my next sermon. Now for many, there is no more repulsive idea than a pastor using AI to write a sermon. AI makes for a soulless shell of a preacher. It's a machine that by nature cannot operate under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Nobody should ever ask AI to write a sermon for them. This is a dereliction of duty and an insult to the high calling of pastoral ministry. But does that mean that we should jettison AI into the realm of outer darkness for all eternity? No. While AI is a wretched preacher, it can be an excellent assistant. I would never use AI to write an entire sermon, but it can be a powerful research partner in the hands of a discerning pastor. This is why I am thrilled with the direction that Logos has decided to take with its new AI features. Their aim is not to replace the work of the Holy Spirit in the sermon writing process, thank the Lord. Uh, instead, they aim to create an AI sermon assistant that can streamline research, break creative blocks, and save you precious time by repurposing your sermon content into valuable resources like discussion questions. Sermon assistant won't write a sermon for you, it will assist you in writing your sermon. And that's what an AI tool for preaching should be. So is the Logo Sermon Assistant another overhyped AI promise or does it deliver? I've used Logos for years because it's the world's most powerful Bible study tool. It's packed with more pro features than you may ever even need to use. And Logos is like having a seminary library on all of your devices. And as much as I love the smell and the, and the feel of a good physical book, they just take up tons of space. And worse, they take hours to search when every second counts in a busy ministry schedule. Now, I wish I had hours to just peruse a good theological library, but I live in the fast paced reality of ministry demands. Logos allows me to search my entire library of thousands of commentaries, study Bibles, systematic theologies, and other books in seconds to find exactly what I need when I need it. With additional tools to help study the original languages and more, Logos is just unmatched. The Sermon Builder is a beautiful bonus with numerous time-saving benefits. It allows you to write your sermon directly in Logos without switching apps. It automatically generates slides and imports scripture into your document by simply typing the address. It saves and organizes all of your sermons in the Sermon Manager library. And when it's time to preach, a push of a button switches to preaching mode on your computer, tablet, or phone so you can preach right there from it. Now, these powerful features alone make Logos worthy of consideration, but now they're also adding AI. And when you click on the new Sermon Assistant button in the Sermon Builder, you'll see options to generate ideas for outlines, illustrations, applications, and questions. And here's what I found when I put it to the test. If you know the central passage of your sermon or the main theme, which you should before you sit down to write it, the Outline tab generates sermon outline ideas for you. So if you want to preach a three-point sermon, type in the sermon passage or theme, select the number of points you desire, pick the age group of your audience, whether adults, teens, or children, and then click generate. This feature takes longer than some of the other ones, but I got results in under 30 seconds, so it's not too long. I was surprised to see that before the outline, the sermon assistant summarizes the Bible passage, application, teaching, how the passage points to Christ. I love that. The big idea and even a recommendation about something you may want to study as you prepare the sermon. So the central passage of my sermon was Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 29. And the big idea is loving the Bible means living the Bible. If you love God's word, you should apply it to your everyday life, right? I was shocked by how good these tips were in my test. The summaries, big idea, and study tips were fantastic starting points for a sermon. Below all these tips is that three-point outline that I requested, and the AI even works in enough awesome alliteration to make a Baptist preacher proud. 
Now I hit the generate another button multiple times and uh, was impressed with the different outlines and variety of unique titles, though many were still kind of organized similarly. Now the only problem I encountered was that when I asked for a one point outline, the AI still gave me two to four points, not sure why. Perhaps this is a bug that's gonna be fixed before the official release, but overall, the outline feature is fascinating. While I would never really wholly rely on this outline tool, because I prefer to pray and study the text and then allow scripture to guide uh, the form of my outline as I, as I study and prepare, I can see how this could be a really helpful launching point for a pastor who's just struggling uh, and trying to develop an initial outline for their sermon. So if you're looking for a copy and paste solution, stop it. But if you have writer's block and you need a little help just kind of getting things moving and started, use this tool as Logos intended to get your brain flowing and moving in a helpful direction. Think of it like an assistant tasked with brainstorming ideas, which you can then build on to create your own unique outline. While writing my sermon, I came to a point where I wanted to insert an illustration and working off of Jesus's warning to build on a firm foundation, I thought an illustration about the perils of a building with a bad foundation could be Fitting. So I pulled up the sermon assistant, hit the illustrations tab, and I typed in the idea box, what is the worst building collapse in history? You then need to select a tone, whether it's serious, emotive, or lighthearted, and then the type of illustration, whether it's personal, historical, hypothetical, or biblical, and the audience age, as mentioned earlier, for the illustration that you want. I chose emotive, historical, and adult, and clicked generate. In a few seconds, the sermon assistant gave me a handful of illustration ideas, and once again, I was pleasantly surprised by how good some of these were. But for fun, I just hit generate more and got even more helpful ideas just to see what it would do. I decided to go with an example of the Rana Plaza in Bangladesh, which collapsed in 2013, killing over 1,100 people. With the push of a button then, you can just copy and insert the illustration directly into your sermon. Now, I feel like a broken record, but please don't copy and paste these illustrations. That's not Logos' desire either. Use this feature like an idea generator, then getting that idea into your sermon. Think of it like having a research assistant that you've asked to find possible illustrations for this sermon point. And once you comb through the list of ideas that they've given you, build off of the good idea you find, rewrite the illustration, tell it better, more, tell a more impactful story in your own words, then it, it's not going to give you that much. Then you connect that to a helpful application that enhances your sermon and you're good to go. Use the illustration ideas for further research too, to verify the story's accuracy. I can't express this enough. With AI answers, always follow the sage advice of trust, but verify. If used wisely, this is a powerful tool, but it's not intended to do all the work for you. You still need to know what kind of illustration you're looking for, and you should tell the story in your own words. Toward the end of my sermon, where I like to offer some potential takeaways from the main point in the text, I pulled up the application tab. In the idea box, I asked the application question, how should we know and follow the Bible in our daily lives? Then you select an option for the situation in which it should be applied, whether it's at home, at work, education, church, public life. And I checked all of them except church because I was just looking for situations outside of Sundays. And I selected adult for my audience like I had before, but I also experimented later with teens and children and found that it generated some more appropriate applications for those age groups as well. Now, the application generator spit out several helpful application ideas, such as starting a morning habit of prayer and Bible reading, having integrity and good work ethic at work, and incorporating biblical principles into lessons if you're an educator. Once again, I was shocked at how spot on some of these ideas were. And if I didn't like some of them, I could always just click the button and generate more. Remember, these application points are only ideas that should be re- written and then shaped to fit the sermon that God has laid on your heart to preach. You might take a few of them or the list of ideas may inspire a completely different application that you think of that you want to use instead. And that's the point. The application generator is a helpful and powerful tool that whenever you hit writer's block and you need that boost of inspirational ideas is there for you to help get things flowing again. Now, my church, we include discussion questions in the bulletin alongside the sermon notes every single week. They're helpful but I secretly despise them, okay? Don't tell anybody, just between me and you, because, not because they're bad, but because writing these questions is just tedious. By the time I've poured hours of blood, sweat, and tears into writing a sermon, I am spent. I've given it all I've got. And when I'm done writing, I wanna be done. But no, 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 no. 
I am forced to work another hour or so to come up with these dreaded discussion questions. So this makes the AI question generator the most exciting tool for me, because after I wrote my sermon, I decided to pull up the sermon assistant question tab, and you can select from one or all of four different types of questions, whether it's comprehension, theology, spiritual application, and life application. So I just selected all of them, selected the age of my audience, and clicked that generate button, and voila, I had a beautiful list of shockingly good discussion questions, and it nearly, nearly brought a tear to my eye. Now, with the push of a button, I inserted them all at the end of my sermon, and I still needed to edit them, remove some, rewrite some others. Some of the questions sparked some ideas for even better questions, too. But the drudgery of just thinking of enough questions to fill the page was over. I had more questions than I needed, and all it took was some editing, and I had saved an hour or more of work. Oh, it, was, it, was, it was wonderful. Now, with the Sermon Builder in Logos... You can even mark all the questions to be included in a question tab, and then they can be printed or exported however you desire. And it's beautiful, beautiful thing. All in all, I'm encouraged by Logos' direction with AI. I love that they encourage pastors not to use AI as some robotic substitute for their God-given calling to write human sermons inspired by the Holy Spirit. AI is an awful pastor and an excellent assistant. You'll be disappointed if you expect the AI to do all the work for you, but if you enter with the proper perspective, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. Most of the cons that I experienced didn't even involve the sermon assistant. For example, the sermon builder slide creator interface is still kind of clunky. It lacks precision controls to edit the text the way I'd like to, and it needs an overhaul. A few times I edited a slide, hit the wrong button, and completely wiped out all the work I had just done. And that was really frustrating. So I'm hoping that they're gonna address this soon in a future update. Logos is also moving to a subscription model to support these new AI features, which is gonna really turn some people off. I know it's controversial already. Subscription fatigue is a real thing. I avoid almost all subscriptions on most apps. However, for me, when it comes to something that I use daily for work, as long as the cost is reasonable, I'm more than happy to support it with a subscription because when a company has recurring revenue from a product, it is able to devote more resources to maintaining and improving that product even more often. We're only beginning to see uh, just the starting point of what these powerful AI features are gonna become. As long as the cost is manageable for most pastors, I think it's gonna be worth subscribing. And I know that's controversial because some people are gonna just not wanna do it because of that. Additionally, Logos put me at ease by promising that you're gonna always own your library. So rest assured there, whether you subscribe or not, your books are yours. So my digital books are safe. That's a huge relief to me because I've built up a substantial library over the years. The subscriptions are gonna cover access to features like the Sermon Builder and the Sermon Assistant and future updates like that. Logos won't make sense for you if you don't use it regularly, but the benefits are worth a try if you're a pastor like me who studies the Bible daily.